turn in your Bibles tonight to uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, verses 5, 6, and 7. Uh, I'm going to extend it a little bit for you. Uh, I, uh, I was just kind of walking around the plant after the preacher said, you know, um, I want you to fill in for me. And by the way, I, I appreciate a pastor that will have confidence enough to allow me to stand up here and do this tonight. Because honestly, um, you know, that, that says a lot about your pastor, um, for him, you know, allowing uh, someone else to, to step up into the pulpit. And, and I'm not a preacher. Uh, Y'all know that. I've never announced my calling to preach because I've not been called to preach. I teach Sunday school. And I thank God that he's allowed me to do that, Brother George. And I appreciate my Sunday school attendance. The people that come and want to hear God's word. I really appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate all of you. But I really appreciate the ones that take that extra effort, that extra put that extra oomph in it to come and learn a little bit more about the Lord. And just to, to be able to uh, maybe just get a little bit closer to him. But tonight, as we turn in the Bible to uh, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, 6, and 7, I'm going to read that to you. I've quoted it for many, many times, but I'm going to read it because I'm sure I'll try to quote it. I'll mess it up, Brother George. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5, says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Most people stop with that there. I'm going to add verse 7, because it's a little bit of a warning to us too. It says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It's one thing today that a lot of people are not doing is departing from evil. I've even talked uh, with Christian people. Uh, the person I talked to today is a professing Christian. And one thing that is hindering this person is an evil. And this evil has got this person to a point to where they can't see that the Lord's trying to help them. God knows who this person is. I want to pray for him hard. Pray for him really hard. Because all they need to do is just trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Tonight, if I had a title for this message, it would be, Who Do You Trust? Now what we're going to do tonight, church, is we're going to break down these Three verses, starting with verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. That word trust, if you break that word down, it is a word that is an action word. It's like the word love. You have to put forth something for this to come about. Trust is confidence. So who do you have confidence in? Trust is to rely on. Who are you relying on tonight? Trust is to believe. Who are you believing in tonight? Who do you really believe in tonight? Trust also is to depend on. <coughs> who are you depending on? Are you depending on yourself? Are you depending on the Lord? Trust is also to confide in. So if we look at that word trust, we see that there has to be some action on our part. We have to put forth an effort. The next part of that verse says, In the Lord. In the Lord... Him having all power and all authority, who are you trusting in? 
Are you trusting in the Lord? This verse plainly lays it out for us. He's the one that has all power. He has all authority. He's the Jehovah. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's Yahweh. He's God. He's Jesus. He's the Messiah. He's the beginning and the end. And he's the soon coming king too. So if you look at this verse, you ask, who are you trusting in? Who do you have confidence in? Who do you rely on? Who do you believe in? Who do you depend on? Who do you confide in? In the Lord, having all authority. I pray that that's who you put your trust in. And then we look at another portion that is our part, Brother George. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. So the portion of the verse, with all thine heart, if you look at that portion, you'll see that that covers your mind, your soul, your spirit, your entire emotional nature. It's your entire being. It's one's whole energy. It's everything that you have. So who are you trusting in? Psalms 118 and verse 8 tells us it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. So if you're trusting in the Lord, Isaiah 41 and 13 tells us, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Nothing like having someone always with you, Brother George, to help you. We need help every day, church. I know I do. And I'm glad that he's there to hold my right hand. That's a picture of guidance. That's a picture of loyalty. That's a picture of trust. So if you broke that verse down, you said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That means that you're having confidence with all your heart. That would mean that you're relying on with all your heart. That would mean you're believing in with all your heart. That means you're depending on with all your heart. That means that you're confiding in with all your heart. And then we look at the portion that says, Lean not unto thine own understanding. That lean not and then unto thine own understanding means just don't depend on your own finite wisdom. Too many times we think, I got this. I got this, Lord. I can do this. But little do we know, we can't even walk without him holding our hand. Mm -hmm. We can't even walk without him holding our hand. Too many times we think, well, everything's going to be fine. I can just, you know, it's a money situation. I can take care of it. What you don't know is that money can run out. You better be trusting in the Lord. So lean not unto thine own understanding. Lean not to your own feelings. A lot of times we rely on our feelings. We think we're wise. We think we, we can do these things. Also, don't lean on your own knowledge. Some people think that because they've got a degree in a certain whatever it may be, that, you know, they're smarter than God. Like I said a minute ago, and I don't know who put this on the Internet, but they need to go back and reassess this. But They said Joe Biden had an IQ of 187. Like I said, Einstein had an IQ of 160, and I don't think Joe Biden's smarter than Joe Einstein. Matter of fact, our country wouldn't be in the mess it's in if it was. We wouldn't be praying for those down in Texas, Miss Patty. We wouldn't be praying for all the situations we're going through right now. Don't, don't lean on or don't try to lean on your own intelligence, your own experience your own opinion, your own opinions. So if you go back and you break this whole verse down, 
You trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. That means you're trusting in him. That means that you realize he has all authority. He has all power. Like I said, he is the Jehovah. He's the Alpha and Omega. And he is Yahweh, God, Jesus, the Messiah, the beginning and the end. He's the soon coming king. And if you're trusting in the Lord with all your heart, that's all your mind, that's everything that you've got, your whole being, then you won't lean on your own understanding. Because the Bible says, lean not into thine own understanding. <laughs> Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep thy heart with all, <clears throat> with all diligence. For out of it are the issues <coughs> of life. Excuse me. Psalms 32 and verse 8. <clears throat> I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. So trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Now, <coughs> if we think about this tonight, church, we got a lot of ways that's our own ways. I'm pretty stubborn, Brother Vance. Unfortunately, and a lot of times I think i got to have my way. But the Bible tells us, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Right. And he shall direct thy path. If you break this verse down, in all thy ways, that just means in everything that you do. That means everything that you say. That means everything that you're going to do, you need to acknowledge him if you want him to direct your path. Psalms 25 and 4 says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. That's what we should want tonight, church, is for the Lord to teach us, to teach us his path mm -hmm. so that we might not go down the wrong path. So we say, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In everything you do, you acknowledge him. What is acknowledge him? If, to acknowledge him is to have fellowship with him. That is to recognize him and his importance. It's not only his importance in your life, but your family's life, your church's life, everyone that you deal with. The Bible says in Psalms 128 and verse 1, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways. We have to admit the truth of who he truly is. That's how you acknowledge him. You let him have his way instead of your way. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 23 says, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So we see if we break this verse down, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. In all thy ways, in everything that you do, acknowledge him or have fellowship with him, recognize the importance of him, accept him as being the truth in your life, regardless of what you're facing. And then he shall direct thy path. He will guide you in the path of life. Jeremiah 29, 11. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I want to take time to just tell you a true story tonight. After my son passed away, our son, 
my wife here tonight. After our son passed away, we had the gut-wrenching part of having to make arrangements and his place of burial. And the day, the morning that we were going to have to go and see the grave site and meet with the people of the cemetery, we got in our car, heading down the road, a lot of silence, not a lot being said. I have Android Auto in my vehicle, and that Android Auto, for whatever reason, you figure it out, wouldn't work. And I was just trying to have something to give us some comfort. <coughs> some kind of, something to help us along. And so I just flipped it over to one of my Christian radio stations. And Dr. Greg Laurie was preaching and he was in the sermon. In the middle of his sermon, was talking about losing his son in an automobile accident. You say it's a coincidence? I say not. And he was talking about how he didn't know how he was going to go on preaching. He didn't even know how he was going to go on living, much less preaching. And here is a seasoned man of God that has spent his whole life dedicated to God from college all the way through. And yet, he didn't know what he was going to do, Brother Van. As a matter of fact, he got to a point by his own testimony that he had already pretty much told the Lord, I, I don't know that I can trust you. And he said the Lord illuminated in his heart just as clearly as anything he had ever, ever heard or seen Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It's his life verse. He said that was the worst day of his life. And God gave him something to help him. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. We had traveled about seven miles in our journey to the grave site. And we, he had just got through finishing up with what he was saying about his son and about Jeremiah 29 and 11. And the Lord, on a sign, on a church sign, Jeremiah 29 11 as we're passing by. And me and that lady right there, that's God. We needed a little bit of encouragement to keep going on. Because you know what? Neither one of us at that time knew what we was going to do. But God, Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11. I love that verse. I love that verse. So, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And then we'll go into verse 7 so we can conclude this. And this is a warning to us as we move forward um, with the verses prior to this. And that verse says, Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Our intellect is nothing compared to that of God. We know that. He's the one that created us. We know that human wisdom just falls so far short of God's wisdom. But we need to understand that He is the one that can direct us from the evil, from the enemy, from the one that wants to destroy us, the one that would take your life tonight and dissolve it away if He could. But you're in the middle of God's hand, God has got you right there, and he says, trust, trust in me 
with all thine heart and acknowledge him for who he is. And that way, when you get to verse 7, be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Job chapter 28 and verse 28 says, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. If we depart from the things that are dragging us down, Miss Debbie, the things that drag us down every day, we know what they are. If we'll just depart from them, we will acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Proverbs 16 and 6 says, <clears throat> By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So trust in the Lord tonight, church, with all thine heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall. That's a promise, by the way. He shall direct thy path. And be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Tonight I say as I close that <clears throat> I want to ask you that tr uh, question again that I asked you at the beginning of the, the message. Who do you trust? Tonight I think you trust in the Lord because you're here on Wednesday night. But put that into action. Don't let it just be part of your routine. Let it be something to where it'll help, it'll help you to study the Bible. It'll help you to read God's Word every day, to pray every day, to stay as close to Him as you possibly can. Because you never know when you're going to get that phone call. You never know. It may be at 10 o'clock at night. It may be at 4 o'clock in the evening. There's no telling when that phone call is going to come in. But eventually that phone call will come in. And if you're not trusting in the Lord with all your heart, it could be very detrimental to your Christian walk. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Yes. And let him direct your path. Let's close. Dear Lord, we thank you tonight for allowing us to be back in your house and Father, Lord, for your word, uh, Lord, the truth of your word, and, and so many times, God, we, we read them, we, we hear them, and uh, Lord, we, we just don't meditate on them. And God, to break your word down and see the truth that is behind these few verses, Lord, here in Proverbs, uh, can help anyone, uh, Lord, that uh, will, will allow it to. I pray tonight, God, that there may be something that... Uh, uh, through this message tonight would help someone to, uh, Lord, to be more encouraged and to be more diligent, Lord, about what they do for you. Help me always, God, to keep my eyes on you. Help us, Lord, as a church, Lord, to grow in your will, in your way, and in your word, and, and help us, Father. And Lord, we just ask that you just give us all mercy and grace in our departing tonight and help us to come back at the next appointed time. And we just say we that we love you, Lord. Thank you for all you do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.